excited. I'm honored to be with you. Last time I was with you was, uh, yeah, some time ago. Um, yeah, about four years ago. And then we were scheduled to be together last year, and then a certain thing happened. Um, and, and then I looked around here today, and we come from NorCal, and I'm looking around. This place is packed, and I'm going, well, blessed be the name of the Lord. Like, wow, wow, wow. Now, I know your pastor, you have an amazing associate pastor here, the pastoral family, and your lead pastors are in, in an island in the Pacific right now uh, uh, doing ministry for the glory of Jesus. So I just want you to help me right now recognize, I want them to hear it in Hawaii, the best pastors on the planet. Can you give it up for Pastor Marco and the entire Garcia clan? You may be seated. I want to expedite the process and get right into the word. This is what God's spirit placed in my heart. I'm going to speak in an expedited manner for various reasons. Number one, the anointing. Number two, uh, I'm Latino. And number three, I've had like three Starbucks today. So all of this combined, the anointing, the raza, and the Starbucks, it's what it is, right? But but we're coming out of this cuckoo for Cocoa Puff season. And we are. It's surreal. Dorothy, we're not in Kansas anymore. So I've, I've been asking, you know, the Spirit of God, what are we, what are we going to see? There's so much out there, so much noise in the proverbial system of what's next. Let me lead you with what God has placed in my heart from John chapter 9. Here's the word of the Lord. John chapter 9, as Jesus was walked, by the way, this is not my security guard. This is my prop for today. <laughs> so you're my prop. Right, just a prop. You're my prop. You're more than a prop there, buddy. You're a prop on steroids. All right. <laughs> no, but you'll be. And you'll be. And by the way, I've selected him to demonstrate, to illustrate this message. He has served our country faithfully in, in Afghanistan and Iraq and different parts of the world. This is a hero right here. Talking about a hero right here. He's part of, I'm honored to have him as part of my team. But Jason Fordick represents, to a great degree, he's a metaphor for us because y'all don't see it here uh, behind these amazing steroid anointed muscles. He says his creatine, we know the truth. Chocolate it's chocolate steroids. But, but there are some scars here. There really are. Some physical scars from the battlefield. And to a great degree, he embodies what we look like, humanity coming out of this pandemic, this past. We, many people, we've been, we've had, we have scars, even collectively as a society, as a nation. So this word, if you haven't been through anything in the past three years, this word is not for you. So if, you be, if you've had like the best, hashtag best past three years ever in your life, and you haven't been through anything negative, and the enemy hasn't attempted to take away your dream and your joy, then you may want to go on your social media accounts right now. But if you've been through a process, but yet here you are by the grace of God. Then this message is for you. John chapter 9 verse 1. As Jesus was walking, he saw a man who had been blind from birth. Underline that. That's, 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 that's critical. He had been blind from the moment he was born. Verse 6 of John chapter 9. Jesus spit on the ground. I'm going to illustrate this. Mm -hmm. Thank God it's allergy season. He spit on the ground. That's messy. He made mud with the saliva. More messy. And he spread the mud over the blind man's eyes. Then he told him, go wash yourself. So the man went and washed and came back seen. I want to speak to you on the subject matter, messy miracles. When the mess becomes a miracle. The subtext is open your eyes to the new. What if I tell you that out of this mess, we're about to see a miracle like we've never seen before? So let me confess something. I am a bit OCD. My mind works in a very linear sequential manner. For all the Trekkies out there, I may preach like Kirk, but I think like Spock. Which is, that's why I find it to be a bit challenging to reconcile what I perceive as chaos with order. How can a miracle come out of a mess? That's why this biblical narrative speaks to me because I've lived it. If you're going to take any notes, and good luck with that. 
Point number one is open your eyes to what you have never seen before. As Jesus was walking along, he saw a man who had been blind from birth. This man was not losing his sight. This man did not lose his sight. He never had it in the first place. He was born blind. So you see, this circumstance facilitates the environment for Christ to reveal what is described as a functional and ontological extension of the creative nature of providence. What does this mean? In other words, with the woman of the issue of blood, he gave her back her health. With the invalid man at Bethesda, he gave him back his walk. With Lazarus, his homie, he gave him back his life. But with this man, with this man in John chapter 9, Jesus did not give him something he lost. Jesus gave him something he never had in the first place. We're going to preach in a moment here. There's a difference between God restoring something you had and God giving you something you never had in the first place. So I've come all the way to the way to tell you that our God is not just the God that restores. Our God is the God that will give you what you never had before. He is the Lord of the new thing. Somebody repeat after me. He is the Lord of the new thing. Isaiah 43, 19 says, Behold, I do a new thing. Do you not see it? Some of us focus our time in getting back what we lost when we should be asking God to give us what we never had in the first place. God is not interested in renovating your past. He is interested in releasing your future. So the question we have to ask ourselves is, as we come out of this global pandemic, are we ready to see what we've never seen before? Let me ask that one more time for the hearing impaired. Are we ready to see what we've never seen before? There are a lot of people out there making noise and making comments like we want to go back to what we had before. Some people are saying, I want to go back to the normal of before. I want to be honest, what we had before wasn't great. What we had before wasn't amazing. I don't want to go back to what we had before. I want to step into something new. What if I tell you that we're about to see something new? What if I tell you we're about to see something greater than a Sousa? Something greater than the charismatic renewal? What if I tell you that we're about to see a Jesus movement that will make the last Jesus movement look like a rehearsal for this Jesus movement? And, and, and I'm not living in denial. You can say, but you're, you're, you're neglecting what just happened. No, 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 no. I know I've lived it. My family lived it. I know what we've seen in the past 14, 15 months. I know it. I've seen it. For the past year and a couple of months, we've seen darkness. For the past year, we've seen ruins, the ruins of a pandemic that has killed over 500,000 people in this nation alone. The ruins of racial and social unrest. Dividing communities and fragmenting the church. The ruins of political chaos where the donkey and the elephant temporarily succeeded in dividing what belongs to the lamb. The ruins of a cancel culture that insists on silencing everyone and everything that refuses to toe the line of a morally relativistic ideological worldview that runs counter to the word and the spirit of God. The ruins of secular totalitarianism that literally said, quote, casinos and liquor stores are essential, but the church is not. In other words, Jack Daniels, yes, Christ, no. The ruins of a generation targeted by the architects of darkness with a message that there is no truth. There is no holiness, no personal responsibility. We see the ruins. If you turn on CNN, MSNBC, NBC, CBS, and in this house, we don't discriminate. Telemundo Univision. You will see the ruins. And you know what we did in the past year, the past 14 months? We wept. I wept. My family went through COVID. I almost lost my daughter who almost died. We wept. We wept. We wept. We lost family members near and dear. We wept. We wept. We wept. We can't deny the weeping, we wept, we wept, we wept, but there's, there's something the Bible says about weeping.
Weeping may tarry for the night, but joy, but joy, but joy comes in the morning. If you believe we're about to see joy, if you believe we're about to be filled with joy, shout like that daytime has arrived. Put a smile on your face because nothing can stop the sun from rising. I'm here to tell you, don't drink the Kool-Aid, man. We're about to see some great things. That's not hype. Oh, whoa, 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 Pastor Sam. You, 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 you know, things are going to get darker because in the last days, things are going to get darker and things are going to get worse. There's, there's probably going to be another pandemic and there's going to be... Listen. You got to reconcile your eschatology with your missiology. Your eschatology and your missiology have to be lined up. What does that mean? I believe Jesus is coming. I do. But he's not coming back for a broken church. And he's not coming back for a dying church. And he's not coming back for a depressed church. And with great due respect, he's not coming back for a church waiting for a vaccine. And he's not coming back for, he's coming back for a glorious church, a holy church, a powerful church, a mighty church. He's coming. And while the church is waiting for Jesus to come down, Jesus is waiting for his church to stand up. I believe we're about to see like this man what we've never seen before. I believe that we're about the next thing to fill America and the nations. I'm going to speak to you prophetically now. It, it, we're, what we're about to see next, what will fill the nations will not be COVID 2021 or 22. The next thing to fill this nation and the nations will be an outpouring of the Spirit of God like we've never seen before. I see. I, I, I believe we're about to see, oh, because I hear the sound of the rattling of bones coming together. I promise you, I promise you we're about to see a movement. We're about to see Asians and Latinos and African American and white people all coming together. And I'm going to say it, even if I get in trouble and I don't get invited back, we're going to prove to the world that culturally it may be different. But according to the word of God, there is no such thing as a white church or a black church or a brown church or a nation church there's only one church the church of Jesus and the gates of hell shall not, will not may not, cannot prevail against her we're about to see a unity movement the church come together we're about to see we're about to see a season of instead of something different it's ready for this instead of riots we're going to see revival Instead of lockdowns, open heavens. Instead of hatred, love. Instead of relativism, truth. Instead of confrontation, conversations. Instead of political affiliations, prophetic designations. And instead of storming the Capitol, we're about to storm the gates of hell in the name of Jesus and take back everything that belongs to us. We are about to see what we've never seen before. 1 Corinthians 2.9 says, What no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor the heart of man imagined is what God has prepared for those who love him. Raise your right hand repeat after me. You need to believe. I've lived it. Repeat after me. I'm about to see. For the glory of Jesus, what I've never seen before. In my family. You got to say it like you believe it. In my faith. Oh, I feel an anointing. Matter of fact, go back to say, in my family. Somebody get ready. Put your porch light on, baby. Your prodigal sons and daughters are coming back home. Get ready to see your family saved. Get ready to see your family transformed. Re repeat after me one more time. In my family. In my faith. In my finances. In my relationships. In my church. In my community. In my thinking, in my actions, in my words, in my health, in my nation, I'm about to see the glory of Jesus like I have never seen before. If you believe it, praise like you believe it and shout like you believe it and rejoice 
like you believe it. Número dos. Punto número dos. Para los que son de Sinaloa. Open your eyes to God's spirit. Then he spit on the ground. We're going to demonstrate this. Made mud with the saliva. And spread the mud over the blind man's eyes. You and I both know that Jesus, this guy was born blind. Jesus shows up. Jesus could have done an old school bewitched or I dream of genie. For anybody over 40. And anybody under 40 are about to Google these things. And, and he could have done that and just said like. He could have gone like. Jesus could have just walked away with swag and all like, and boom. But he didn't. For whatever reason, he wanted us to show us this process. Very unorthodox, by the way. Not highly recommended in 2021. What a process. Ladies and gentlemen, I've discovered in my journey that sometimes the process is messy. In my eyes. Sometimes the process is a bit complex. But here it is. The God of the outcome is the same God of the process. Let me repeat that the other way. The God of the process is the same God of the outcome. The process is temporary, but the promise is permanent. And do not mistake the temporary for the permanent. Do not mistake the process for the promise. Do not confuse what you're going through and what you're going to. And, and, and permit me to remind you, if you are going through what you've never been through before, it's only because you're about to step into and occupy what you've never occupied before. So, here it is. So, so he spits. There was mud on the ground. There was dirt, so he spit. He combines a spit with the dirt, making mud, hence mud. He spit, and he takes this. This is crazy. All right, close your eyes. You're blind. He's, this is crazy. I mean, because he does this. He, he's, he's, right? And then he spits, and then he combines it, and then he does this. This is, this is, this really happened. Are there any questions? Y pal colmo, he spread it. That's not me. The Bible says he spread it. Like, you know, are you kidding me? Nope, he spread it. He's, you look better this way, by the way, in such a... <laughs> In such a different context, you look better this way. Stay right there. Don't move anywhere. Right there. Um, I, I have a couple questions for you. Um, so he spit, and he, and, he, and, he, and he took a spit. He put it to the dirt, and then from the dirt, he put it in the man's eye. He spit. Um, help me out here. What's in your spit? Your DNA. I don't know if you got that. I'm not talking about metaphorically speaking, figuratively speaking. I'm talking about literally speaking. Jesus took his DNA and placed it upon a blind man's eyes. I don't know if you're getting this. In other words, with your DNA, you're blind. With my DNA, you're about to see my glory. With your DNA, you're a victim. With my DNA, you are more than a conqueror. With your DNA, you are limited. With my DNA, you can do all things through Christ who gives you strength. With your DNA, you will make excuses. With my DNA, you will make history. So, I have to ask you, did Jesus transfer his DNA, literally speaking, he placed his DNA on top of a blind man 2,000 years ago. When Jesus died, resurrected, ascended, and he sent his Holy Spirit. Ladies and gentlemen, you and I have a lot more than the spittle of Jesus. You're going to get this in a second. We just don't have his spit on top of us. We have his spirit inside of us 
and not just any spirit. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives inside of you. Romans 8, 11. I don't know if you get this. With the spirit of Jesus, this man opened up his eyes and he can see. With the spirit of Jesus, you can come out of anything. With the spirit of Jesus, you can come out of anxiety. You can come out of depression. You can come out of addiction. You can come out of multi-generational curses. With the spirit of Jesus inside of you, you can come out of anything. If Jesus came out of the tomb, you can come out of anything. Failure, poverty, rejection, offense, to sin, past. Ephesians 5.18, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Oh, he got the spit, we got the spirit. If with the spit, he saw some stuff, imagine what we're about to see with the spirit. Are we streaming? We are? Oh, there goes that. Well, I'm going to say it anyway. I want to be clear, even if I don't get invited back. This has nothing to do with anything just to care. I just want to be clear with great due deference and love. There's not an executive order, a Supreme Court decision, a legislative initiative, a law, or a social media campaign that has the power to stop the Holy Spirit from moving upon the face of the earth. I'm going to say that one more time. There's not a Supreme Court decision, an executive order, a law, or a hashtag that can stop the Holy Spirit from moving upon the face of the earth. You can't cancel the Holy Spirit. You can't deplatform the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is unstoppable. If you have the Spirit, praise like you have the Spirit. And Worship like you have the spirit and rejoice. We wrap it up here. Number three and we're wrapping up. I, I told you he spit but not directly. That was the other guy in Mark. Different guy. The other guy in Mark was born with sight and he lost it. You'll get this tomorrow morning. Pero con este muchacho hizo algo distinto. He spit on the ground first. Stop, stop, stop. He spits on the ground in the dirt. Combines the dirt with his saliva, his DNA, and then puts it on his eyes. Why would he spit on the ground? Ladies and gentlemen, according to Genesis 2-7, what did God make man out of? He went back to the original design. Oh, you're going to get this. In other words, in God's original plan for you, you're not a drug addict. In God's original plan for you, you're not a multi-generational philanderer. In God's original plan for you, you're not broke, busted, and disgusted. In God's original plan for you, you are the righteousness of God. You are a child of God. He goes back to the original design. Psalm 139, verse 13. You made all the delicate inner parts of my body. You knit me together in my mother's womb. He went back to his plan. Jeremiah 1.5, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. Oh, 1 Corinthians 15.45, you were born according to the model of the second Adam, the last Adam, not the first Adam. What does this mean? God has a plan for you. He has a plan for your children. He has a plan for your children's children. He has a plan for your now and in your next. I want to say this right now. You give Jesus access to your dirt and he will grant you access to your destiny. Let me repeat that. Give, you have to give Jesus access to your dirt before he grants you access to your destiny. Everything God has planned for you will come to pass. So he, he went back to the original design. When you go back, when you're born again and you're original original design is fully activated. Here's the great news. Your children will not inherit your sins. I want to say this. Get ready. Your children will not inherit your sins. Your children will inherit your blessings. Your children are not going to inherit your mistakes. Your children will inherit your mantles. 
Let me declare your children and your children's children and your children's children's children will never live in what God took you out of. <laughs> Philippians 1.6, 1 Thessalonians 5.24, he who started the good work will finish it. He who called you is faithful to do it. And Ephesians 3.20, he'll do it exceedingly abundantly above all. Open your eyes, open your eyes, open your eyes to something new, to the new thing. Open your eyes to the Holy Spirit of God. Open your eyes to God's original design. And open your eyes to a holy mess. He blinded him. And then this is crazy what Jesus told him to do. He literally did this. And you would think that Jesus would then say, well, let me myself take you. Come on, mijo, let me wash you myself. No that, that, no, that did not happen. Jesus blinded a blind man. <laughs> Hence a double blind study. He blinded a blind man. This really happened. And then Jesus says, go wash yourself. That's like antithetical to the whole merciful compassion. And what happened to Jesus taking me to the waters? Because there are things that we need to learn to do by ourselves. You got to learn to pray for yourself. You got to learn to worship all by yourself. You got to learn to pray by yourself. You got to learn to prophesy over yourself. Oh, Pastor Sam, I need somebody to give me a word. Get your right hand, put it on your forehead, and say, here's the word. No weapon formed against you will prosper. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. If God be for you, who can be against you? Prophesy to yourself. You got to learn to pick yourself up. Told him, go wash yourself. You know what this man did? He walked with the mess. To others, it looked like a mess. But he walked with what was perceived to be a mess. People could have judged him. The blind man's loco, he's walked me. Look at him walking with the mud in his eyes, he's blind enough. People judge you based on what they see, they don't know. No, they don't know what's behind that. They don't know there's saliva from the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and the host of hosts. They don't know that your mama prayed you through. They don't know that somebody was interceding for you. They don't know that behind that mess, there is a miracle. So I'm here to tell you prophetically, get ready. You're about to see your mess become a miracle. You're about to see your mess. Whatever is messy in your life is about to become a miracle. I walked with my mess. In July of 2020, in the midst of COVID, my family, went, we went through a journey. We, we were careful. We did all, dotted the I's, crossed the T's. By the grace of God, I was named to be part of the National Recovery, Coronavirus Recovery Commission. So I was in those conversations. I knew firsthand. I was zooming in with the doctors you saw on television. So I knew the seriousness of the pandemic. I don't deny the validity and the seriousness of it. So we took care of ourselves in every, every single way. And we contact Trace from a person who came from Houston, Texas. These Texans, man, I'm telling you. They, there was a person who interacted with one of our guys, and he transferred over a very interesting variant from Houston. Uh, my family got it first week of July. I was asymptomatic. I run a lot. And I don't mean just on stage. So because of the running regimen and so forth, I actually ran better, so help me God, during COVID and out of COVID. I did better timing. So it was really weird. So I was asymptomatic. I was like 98% symptomatic. Look at me. You know me for a scandal for you. Like, dude, one day. <laughs> Couldn't explain it. It lasted like three seconds. Like, I'm promised. My wife, I was talking to her the moment I went like, woo, que paso? And just couldn't explain it. I had it. He said, me fue. And it's like, all right, that was it. That was it. That was it. They didn't lose nothing. Nah, nah. So my son was completely symptomatic. My family, my daughter who just gave birth to my Mila, her white blood cell count was in the low threes. Because she gave birth, her immune system was a little bit suppressed, and COVID smacked her and knocked her out, man. And, and it put her in a hospital, and I'm thinking, nah, she's, a, you know, she's like a kid, she's a millennial, she's, she's going to be fine. 
and I speak to the doctor because we couldn't see her, right? It was very restricted back then. And they put her in the hospital, and, and I speak to the doctor, and, and, and I just, you know, hey, doc, what's going on? You know, one day, two days there, Mr. Rodriguez, things don't look good. No, what do you mean they don't look good? She's young. Yeah, she's, the statistics say that her age, like, whoo, what? No. Yeah, but her white blood cell count was suppressed. So let's just say COVID just went in full throttle there. And Okay, what are you, what are you saying, man? I mean, you're, you're saying like, what, three days, four days, and then she's out? Mr. Rodriguez, we're going to take this day by day. All right, but there is like light, right, at the end of the proverbial tunnel. And I'm going like, right, 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 trying to get like an affirmation, even some sort of like, you know, affirmation, you know, some sort of, hey, Tom. And when the doctor says nothing on the other line, the next day we call back and things got worse. She's in a ventilator. She's ventilator and things are going from one level of darkness to the other. Matter of fact, to the point of y'all need to just prepare yourselves. And I'm going like, bro. I, I'm a pastor. I'm a preacher. I mean, I, I, I know this is not hype. I've lived it. I've seen too much of God to doubt him. I've experienced too much of his glory. I, I, I've seen too much of his grace. I, I don't doubt him for a moment. I, not, not even for an iota. So, but, 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 but this is not what I signed up for. I'm going to be honest. So I'm, I'm in NorCal driving in my, in my Jeep Wrangler Rubicon in the middle of July. It's like 110 degrees outside in Granite Bay, and I'm jacked up. And I'm jacked up, I mean, I'm discombobulated, I'm messed up. I, preacher shouldn't be telling you this, but I am. I was broken because I couldn't justify what I was going through, and my baby's about to die. So I'm in the car, and I couldn't even pray. And I know that sounds like, oh, sacrilegious. I'm just being real. I, I, I. I, 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 I wanted to pray, but nothing came out. And, and I wanted to put on worship and go. I wanted to put on, I mean, you name it, from Hillsong to Elevation to whatever. Bethel, Jesus, culture, culture, Jesus, culture, king, whatever. Couldn't, didn't do anything. I was messed up. So I, at that moment, I just, just, but the momento, just driving alone, I just said, I said, God, I have no idea what to do next. I was doing a zillion Zoom video conferences. I was preaching that very evening. I was walking with my mess. People didn't even know. And, 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 and I'm going, I have no idea what to do next. Holy Spirit takes me to 2 Chronicles 20, verse 12, where Jehoshaphat was surrounded by the mucho malo hombres. Jehoshaphat makes the following prayer. Read it. He says, God, I have no idea what to do next, but you do. The Spirit of God fills my Jeep Wrangler Rubicon. I felt the Spirit of God. I could tell you I felt it. Not because I thought I felt it. I know I felt it. I'm a math and science guy. I know it. It was God. You, you can't deny the presence of God. And, and I felt God hug me. And all of a sudden, I said, God, all right, God, let's do this. God, uh, I, re I, I refuse to do this. I'm not a little kid. I'm not a baby. But I'm not Gideon, but I need a little, I need, I need, I need a little thing for you and me because I know you and me like this. So give me a little something, something. I went, I haven't talked to her in days. The family hasn't talked to her. She hasn't seen her newborn baby girl in, in so many days. She hasn't been able to breastfeed. It's just things are bad. And now they're saying she's dying. Do something right now. Can you just invade intensive care? Can, can, can you watch this? Watch, watch the wording. The wording is this. Can, you, can, can heaven invade her room? And can you send an army of angels? Let me tell you. What happens afterwards? My daughter, who is in ICU, but because she is in intensive care and she's a millennial, if she's going to die, she's going to die with her iPhone. You follow what I'm saying? She is in ICU. She texts me, not knowing. I haven't talked to her in days. She goes, Dad, come up. Paraphrase. Ready for this? Dad, come up. I'm not going crazy. Poop. Period. Heaven. I feel like heaven just invaded my room. Hey, hey dad, I feel like angels were coming in and out of my room. The moment I read that, I said, God is in the house. Stand with me. You are standing, stand with me. 24 hours later, I speak to the same doctor. 
And the doctor says, Mr. Rodriguez, quote, I can't explain it. Now, I have great empathy for those that lost loved ones. I do, but I can't deny my miracle. And your miracle will be fully realized in eternity, so we get this. Romans 8, 28. But 24 hours later, doctor says, can't explain it. Your daughter has completely turned around. I go, what does that mean? Doctor says, well, exactly what I said. She's off, not just the ventilator. She's off the different breathing apparatus. And she went through the three steps they had. And they went, and quit. Then 48 hours later, doctor says, we're not supposed to do this outside of COVID because of liability, but because there's, so, there's such a, a great line of weight. Every metric of your daughter, she's completely 100% recovered. So I need you and your family to come and pick her up. Ladies and gentlemen, there is still power in the name of Jesus. There is power when you walk with your mess, when you prop. And I could tell you that we pick her up. It's, it's a Puerto Rican Mexican family. We're Mexicans. We're Mexicans and Puerto Ricans. That's a lot of energy. So we picked her up and, and we put her in the one SUV, the entire familia in one SUV. Puro raza, nombre. And, and we picked her up, we put her in the SUV. God is my witness. I wrote about it in the book. And it, she gets in, we look at her, everybody's crying. We, I'm, 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 we, Mija, where do you want to go? It's your first thing. I'm thinking, I'm, I'm hoping she's saying it's my favorite place of refuge and solace, Starbucks. <laughs> But she didn't. She says, let's drive aiming towards Tahoe. We aim towards Tahoe in the middle. There's a lake. We go to that lake. She, she leads the way without telling us anything of what she's doing. We follow her. Like the Pied Piper, we're following her. And, and part of me logically is thinking the medicine, the meds are kicking. Or, you know, it, 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 she's not, that's not normal behavior. It's not rational. She walks down to the edge of the lake. She tippy toes, touches, doo -doo -doo, looks around. Dives in. I would be lying to you if I told you when she swam 30 miles. Never happened. She dived in and she just came back out. She lifted up her hands crying and she said, I'm alive. We're about to see. We're about to see families and cities experience the glory of God. We're about to see cities and communities that have walked with their miracle. But it looked like a mess, but it's going to be washed. And they're going to say, we are alive by the grace of God, by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Everybody, lift up your hands. Come here. Sometimes you got to walk with your mess. People may judge you, criticize you. How could you preach, teach, prophesy when your daughter's almost dying? Sometimes they don't know that there's a miracle behind that mess. I'm going to count to three, and you're going to, you're going to just, matter of fact, just do me a favor. We, don't open up your eyes. Just wash, go wash yourself. Do it right now. Go ahead. This is prophetic. People have been walking with a mess in your family, your home, your marriages, your ministries, your calling, your finances, your dreams, and your careers. But behind that mess, it's just a miracle with mud on it. Go wash yourself. So ready? Keep, keep your eyes closed. Keep your eyes closed. Use that towel, JC, if you want these to clean yourself completely there. Go ahead. Get that stuff off you. Get up. And, and here it is. Here's some white piece here. Here's some white piece here. Because don't open your eyes yet. When I count to three, you're going to open up your eyes. But you're going to represent people who have been walking with their mess. Because you're about to see what you've never seen before. And you're about to see. In your, I sense the anointing of the Lord. You're about to see in your family, your home, your calling. Where you're Ready? At the count of three, everybody close your eyes. At the count of three, you're going to open up your eyes. And you're going to see what you've never seen before. Your mess is about to become your miracle. Your mess is about to become your miracle. Your mess is about to become your miracle. Ready? You're about to see the glory of Jesus, the grace of Jesus, the power and the favor of Jesus like you've never seen before. Ready? Here we go. Do it and give God your best praise. One, two, three. Open up your eyes. Open up your eyes. Watch your mess become your miracle. I need you to praise like the devil's been defeated. Shout like nothing can stand in your way. Worship like nothing. No weapon formed against you will ever prosper. Here it is. Quickly. If 
And you, if you have a mess right now in your life, and you need that mess to become your miracle, the count of three right out of your seat and come out here real quick. One, two, three, go. If you, if you have a mess that needs to become a miracle, go. If you have to think about it, it's not you. If you have a messy kid, a messy life, a messy marriage, messy health, messy finances, messy dream, messy integrity, run, 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 run. We got seconds. Come on. Run, run, run. Your mess is about to become your miracle. 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 Yes. Walk with your mess. 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 Church leaders, however you all do your polity here, and however you all pray for them here, I want to respect the rules of the house. However you want to pray for people, however you want to lay hands on people, or if not lay hands, whatever you do, you just do it. I need the rest of the church to stretch out your hands. Elders and leaders that are here, or ultra workers, whatever, whatever that polity may be, go ahead, release the Krakens, activate it. Pray upon them, release it. I mean, literally speaking, your mess is about to become your miracle right now as I speak. No hype, no joke. I've lived it. I've walked it. Ever since my family came out of that, we have seen breakthrough after breakthrough, favor after favor. The glory of God, more doors opened up than ever before. But there's a season in your life where you have to learn to walk with your mess. Fully cognizant of the fact that there's a miracle behind that mess. Let people hate on you. Let people judge you. They don't know that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. They don't know. They don't know. They just don't know. They don't know that God's promises are yes and your life is the amen. Go ahead. Stretch out your hands. Stretch out the hands. Heavenly Father right now, Every messy circumstance, every life that looks like a mess, every marriage that looks like a mess, every health reality, every financial reality, every relational dynamic that looks like a mess, you are the God that makes a mess into a miracle. You are the God of messy miracles. The God of the process is the God of the outcome. You are the God that transfers your DNA, your spirit, and to those that have never ever even seen before God we're about to open up our eyes and see your glory your grace and your gifting Psalm 84 11 like we have truly never seen before right now unleash that power upon every life right now upon every life every circumstance every hope we release it we affirm it we confirm it by the authority of heaven every mess becomes a miracle every mess becomes a miracle every mess becomes a miracle every mess tonight becomes a miracle in the name of Jesus in Jesus name in Jesus name I sense the Lord in Jesus name with your hands raised in Jesus name It's a miracle. It's a miracle. It's a miracle. It's a miracle. Receive that right now. I'm going to give it to Pastor. Y'all look up here for a second. Except those that are being prayed for. That's priority. Everybody else look up here for a second. The God of the process is the God of the outcome. Trust them in both chapters. Even when it looks messy, you have to believe that underneath the mud, there is a miracle. Go wash yourself. If you receive tonight's word, can you shout unto God with the voice of victory and triumph? I want to give the sermon notes away to somebody who's messy. All right. All right. There it is. Look up here for a second. I love you all. I bless you. I'm, I, I'm going to ask you to do something tonight. I'm going to do something, Jason. I'm going to get in trouble, but we're going to do this. I wrote this story about my daughter 
And what you heard tonight regarding my daughter in a book that it's called From Survive to Thrive. God blessed it. He made it a, a, a top seller, a best, number one bestseller on Amazon. Blessed it indeed. And I want you to get a copy of it. Now, unfortunately, my office messed up and we didn't get the books on time. We didn't get the books. So I'm going to do something crazy. If you go to Amazon.com tonight and purchase the book, I promise you with my word of integrity in public that I will send you, if you email the screenshot to the following email address, info at nhclc.org, info at nhclc.org, right here. If you send the screenshot, you go to Amazon, you purchase it, I will send you another hard copy, free, this very, so today is Wednesday, it should be going out by tomorrow, you got to do it by tonight midnight, so we'll go out by tomorrow, you should get it early next week, only with the commitment that you're going to give it to someone, someone who needs to see their mess become a miracle, are you with me right now? So, you buy it today on Amazon, send the screenshot to that email address, I will send you another copy and that's completely on us. So you could give it to someone who needs to see their miracle. We love you. We bless you. May the strength of the Father, the grace of the Son, the anointing of God's precious Holy Spirit make the rest of 2021 the best year of your life. Hey, the way. Let's do one thing together. Follow me on social media, please. Let's do one thing together. Ready? Let's go change the world. God bless you and God keep you. Peace.